Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert, and I, I am feeling pretty good about myself today. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Fantastic I'll tell you why. Story. It's because Robert Mueller doesn't want to ask me any questions. <laughs> You'll remember, uh, observers of the news will remember, that our commander-in-chief had a hissy fit on Twitter <laughs> yesterday, just yesterday, yesterday, 35 tweets over the weekend or something like that, mm -hmm. and now we know why he's freaking out. Apparently, Trump's tweet storm came after learning Mueller wants to ask him about obstruction of justice. Why is Donald Trump... <laughs> sure, oh, sure, go ahead. Sure, ob obstruction of justice fans, of course. <laughs> I don't know why Donald Trump is surprised. When the cops want to talk to you, it's usually about a crime. Uh-oh, uh-oh, they're pulling me over. Well, they probably just want to know if I checked out season two of Atlanta yet. <laughs> Meanwhile, oh, let me get rid of this. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mueller wants to ask about obstruction of justice, but has agreed to limit the scope of questioning and would like to ask questions both written and orally. You lost me at written. <laughs> uh, uh. But you got me back at orally. <laughs> okay? You know I'm a fan. You know I'm a fan. But despite the perils, Trump is pushing for an interview with Mueller against his lawyer's advice. Yes, Trump has said from the beginning that he wants to talk to Mueller one-on-one. -on -one. And his lawyers have said from the beginning, why did I go to law school? I could have been a dentist. I'd rather be up to my elbows in someone else's spit. <laughs> according, according to people close to Trump, Trump believes he can convince the investigators of his belief that their own inquiry is a witch hunt. <laughs> Mr. Mueller, may I call you Bob? Bob, <laughs> look, have you seen my tweets? This one has witch hunt in all caps, okay? <laughs> I rest my case. Do you want to arrest yourself or should I slap the cuffs on you right now? <laughs> and Trump's still getting legal advice from attorney and man who just realized how he'll be remembered. Rudolph Giuliani, who called on Mueller yesterday to wrap this whole thing up. We believe that the investigation should be brought to a close. We think they're at the end of it. They should render their report, put up... I mean, I guess if we were playing poker, we're not... We'd put up a shut-up. What do you got? Oh, you better hope you're not playing poker. Because <laughs> your client can't keep a casino running. Uh, we're also we're getting new details from the trial of former Trump campaign manager and nursing home director who steals jewelry on bingo nights, <laughs> Paul Manafort. Uh, prosecutors are trying to convince the jury that Manafort knowingly deceived the government and the banks, all so he could live a lavish lifestyle. According to court documents, he spent $1.26 million at just two high-end clothing stores. So if you tell Paul Manafort you look like a million bucks, you're insulting him. <laughs> but you might not say that he looks like a million bucks, because these jackets are what he was wearing. This boxy pinstripe number would look great in the corner office or a high school production of Guys and Dolls. <laughs> this one screams, they just took my thumbs, Charlie. And this $18,000 python skin jacket says, watch me unhinge my jaw and swallow a poodle whole. <laughs> basically, basically, his closet looks like if a blind pimp got a hundred wishes. <laughs> These... Can't wish for infinite wishes. These jackets... <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> These jackets are so damning that the judge had to actually step in, saying, enough is enough. We don't convict people because they have a lot of money and throw it around. The government is not going to prosecute people for wearing nice clothes. Okay, but what about his clothes? Yeah. And 
It's not. It's not just the jackets that made Manafort look shady here. It's how Manafort paid for those jackets. One clothing store manager testified that Manafort was his only client who paid with international wire transfers. <laughs> oh, come on! That's totally normal. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll uh, have a pack of gum and uh, some Slim Jims. What's that? Uh, $4.99? Hmm. Let's see here. Yuri at Odessa Bank isn't answering my texts. <laughs> Do you guys accept stolen paintings? <laughs> but by far, my favorite detail from these jackets is one of the labels. It reads, Wearable Art for PM. Ah, yes. Paul Manafort had wearable art by Bijan. For the man with discriminating taste and incriminating clothes. Where are <laughs> For when you want to look elegantly understated while being chased by Interpol. Wearable art by For distinctive menswear that says Yuri and I will go make the disco. For when your neck suit is an orange jumpsuit. Wearable art by who? Oh. They're not a sponsor, are they? No? Okay. <laughs> Big news for fans of all three dimensions. This week, it was announced that scientists have discovered a new shape. I assume this discovery was made by the crack team at Fisher Price University. <laughs> so what is this hot new shape that's burning up the internet? Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the Scootoid. <laughs> yeah. It looks like something from your aunt's salt and pepper shaker collection. <laughs> this new shape has been described as a column with half of one and lopped off at an angle, a prism with a zipper. No, a prism with a zipper is not a shape. It's one of Paul Manafort's jackets. <laughs> it, yes, it's Bijan. It's also, the scootoid has also been described as a twisted prism. By the way, twisted prism, also my favorite metal band. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. Chloe Grace Moretz is here. But when we return, 